not all thermal electrocyclic reactions take place in the con rotatory fashion. Some electrocyclic reactions on the thermal conditions take place via the disrotatory fashion. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following example. So we want to analyze the photochemical and the thermal electrocyclic reaction between 135 hexatriene and 13 cyclohexadiene. So we begin with this reactant and we form this product and this reaction is an electrocyclic reaction. Now we want to analyze the thermal and then we want to analyze the photochemical. But before we look at these two different types of reactions, let's actually analyze the orbitals, the molecular orbitals of 135-hexatriene. Now, in 135 hexatrine, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So we have six 2p orbitals combined to form six pi molecular orbitals. Now, instead of actually working out what these molecular orbitals are, I've listed these orbitals on the following energy diagram in increasing energy order. So we begin with the lowest in energy and most stable pi molecular orbital phi 1 and we go all the way up to phi 6 which is our highest in energy and least stable molecular orbital pi molecular orbital. Now how many pi electrons do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 valence electrons in the pi system. A maximum of two electrons can go into any given orbital. So we begin with the lowest in energy and go up. So we have two electrons going to phi 1, two electrons going to phi 2, and two electrons go into phi 3. So what is our highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO? It's basically phi 3. So when we have the thermal electrocyclic reaction from 135 hexatrine to 13 cyclohexadiene, the orbital that will rotate is phi 3. So basically we want to examine the rotation, the way in which the first and the last orbital of phi 3 will rotate to actually form the sigma bond between carbon 1 and carbon 6. So let's examine the thermal electrocyclic reaction first. So let's draw our molecule 135 hexatrine. So we have one bond and here. So we basically have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So because we are dealing with the thermal case, we're looking at this phi three because this is our homo. So let's draw this orbital as shown, starting from this carbon, which is our first carbon. So the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, and so forth. So we have the blue lobe here, the blue lobe here, then we have green on the bottom or blue on the bottom here, then we have blue on the bottom here, next we have blue on top and blue on top. And let's fill in our green as well. So basically blue designates, let's say, the negative part of the wave function of the orbital and green designates the positive sign. So the orbitals that we really want to focus on is orbital number six and orbital number one, or orbital number one and orbital number six because these are the orbitals that will do the rotation to form this sigma bond between carbon one and carbon six. So let's undergo our uh, reaction in which we're basically inputting our energy. Uh, and the energy is coming from heat. So 
let's use red to designate our rotation. So let's try to rotate in uh, the this rotatory fashion. This rotatory means that they're rotating in the opposite directions. So if this blue tries to rotate this way, where we go out of the board, this will try to rotate into the board in the opposite direction. And these will basically overlap to form an overlap between these blue regions and that will in fact form a bond. So if we're examining from top to bottom, the final molecule will look something like this. So basically, we have an overlap between these blue orbitals. So, so we form this bond here, which looks something like this. This will basically be our sp3 hybridized bond. So this is one of the disrotatory rotations. If we rotate it in the other fashion, this rotation. If we rotated this going into the board and this coming out of the board, then basically the green parts of our molecule will actually overlap. And once again, in the other case, we're also going to form a bond. But now this will be the positive region. Here we have the negative and here we have our positive. So let's draw this one as well. Now we're not going to draw orbitals two through five because we don't really care about those orbitals. The only orbitals we're rotating are the two orbitals that are forming our bond, the sigma bond. So it's orbital one and orbital six. So we have the green pointing down, green pointing down. We have the blue pointing up the blue pointing up and in this uh, in this particular reaction we have them rotating in the other version of this rotation so this one's going into the board this one's coming out of the board and we form this overlap and once again this is the side view and this is the top to bottom view so we have our this rotation. So just to not confuse you, this is the side view and this is the top to bottom view. So we're basically looking at the molecule from the top. So if you want to, you can also work out the con rotation for this version of the thermal reaction and you'll see that in the con rotation we form our anti-bonding orbitals so anti-bonding um, interaction so let's <coughs> let's do one of them to see what we mean so let's suppose we have our molecule here we have the molecule we have we're only looking at the first and the last one so we have Here's the first one, here's the last one. And con rotation means they rotate in the same direction. So if they go clockwise, they go clockwise together. So let's do the, the clockwise case goes into the board, goes into the board because we're choosing clockwise to mean uh, into the board. So we have our uh, con rotation and uh, con rotation. Yeah, so basically now once again we're looking from top to bottom and the diagram we're going to see is if this goes into the board the green will basically point in this direction. But if this goes into the board, the blue will align with our green. And this bond is, of course, an anti-bonding interaction. So this will not cause the formation of a bond. So we can do the same exact thing and basically rotate them out of the board and we get the blue being here and the green being here. So let's do that to finish off our thermal reaction. So we have the other con rotation that can take place. 
and let's do the top to bottom right away so we have our green green we have our our blue blue so they're gonna come out of the board and now what happens is the blue will be on this end and the green will be on this end and once again as in this case we have anti-bonding so basically in this case we have a bonding and here we have an anti-bonding so we see that for the thermal electrocyclic reactions involving 135 hexa triene and 13 cyclohexadiene, the only way that this reaction takes place and the bond is formed going this way and bond is broken going in reverse is if the dis rotation reaction takes place. Now let's examine the same exact thing, but now we're dealing with the photochemical version. Remember, in the photochemical version, we're basically shining light on our orbital. So we're shining light onto this orbital, and if the photons of the light have just the right frequency and carry just the right energy, we basically transition, we give, we give the electrons enough energy to transition it into the one right above so now our electron is found in phi 4 and now the highest occupied molecular orbital for our photochemical version is phi 4 so we see that this is so we see that this is the homo the highest occupied molecular version for the thermal reaction and for the photochemical this is our homo highest occupied molecular version photochemical okay so now we basically repeat the procedure except instead of using phi 3 we're now using phi 4 so let's begin with so let's say this is our thermal and this will be our photochemical so Let's begin by drawing this entire orbital. So we begin with the same exact way as we began before. So let's only actually draw the first and the last orbital. We don't care about these four orbitals because they will not be doing the rotation to form our sigma bond. So here we have an orbital pointing, a blue orbital, a blue lobe pointing up, and here we have a blue lobe pointing down. So blue low pointing down, we have a green low pointing up, and our green low pointing down. So now let's try to rotate in the dis rotatory fashion under light conditions. So now we obviously here we have heat, heat, we have our light, and so let's try the dis rotation. If the disc rotation takes place, that means they rotate in the opposite direction. So if this one goes into the board, this one is coming out of the board. So let's draw our molecule once again from top to bottom or the top to bottom view because that helps us visualize. So we're trying to form this bond, but if this takes place, we see that if this goes into the board and this goes out of the board on this side will have the blue but this side will be our green and so if our disc rotation takes place in the photochemical case we produce an anti-bond so this is our anti-bond and we can basically do the same exact procedure except now we rotate it in the other disc rotatory fashion so let's put the s into here so let's redraw our orbital we have this orbital this orbital that points downward uh, this orbital points up this orbital points downward so now we're trying to rotate them in the opposite but inward so this one goes outward this one goes inward so let's draw the arrows this one goes outward out of the board into the board and now we have the opposite this will be blue and this will be green 
So we have the top to bottom view and we have the blue, the blue one will be here. This, this will be blue. This will be the green. And so once again, as in this case, we have an anti-bonding interaction and so the bond will not be formed in this case. And finally, if we follow the same exact procedures, but now we do the other type of rotation. So con rotation, we get the opposite. So we have con rotation, con rotation. Uh, so we have the same exact orbitals as before. The first one has the blue low pointing up. Here we have the blue low pointing down. So blue low pointing up blue low pointing down. Here we have our green pointing up, green pointing down, pointing up, pointing down. So in the con rotatory or con rotation, we have our rotation taking place in the same direction. So let's both go into the board in this case and out of the board in this case. So we see that in this, in both cases actually, we form a bond, we form a bonding interaction. And so in this case, if they both go inward, we have the negative blue version, 